like a hell cut. So the topic for today is IR realization. So basically we have to find direct form 1, direct form 2, cascade and parallel realization and we will use the shortcut method to find them. So let's get started. So our first question is direct form 1 and h of z is given. So h of z is 1 plus 1 by 3 z raised to minus 1 upon 1 minus 3 by 4 z raised to minus 1 plus 1 by 8 z raised to minus 2. So the important point here you should note is the z should be in the term of minus n either minus 1 or minus 2 in numerator and denominator. Okay, so this is the first important point you should know. Now let's talk about direct form 1 structure. So as I have mentioned in my previous videos, the shortcut trick was first you should have this line where in left hand side we have x of n, right hand side we have y of n. Okay. Now in this side we will have zeros, in this side we will have poles. So zeros and we will have poles. And coefficient are as it is whereas because it is in backward direction coefficient will be negative of the coefficient. Okay, so the first term is 1. So 1 will go as it is. There is no problem. Then we have a delay of z raised to minus 1. And it is going. So both terms are added you can see. And the coefficient will remain as it is. So the multiplier is 1 by 3. Now let's talk about pool. So the 1 is going as it is. You can see. Now let's talk about the delay part. So the first delay is z raised to minus 1 and the multiplier is and you can see multiplier is minus 3 by 4 as I said it should be it should be the negative of the value so here it would be 3 by 4 okay further so now we will get z raised to minus 2 term here so here we have z raised to minus 2 term here we have z raised to minus 1 term okay so the multiplier here is so you can see it is 1 by 8 we should take the negative of that so minus 1 by 8 so this is the direct form 1 structure and you can see the, de uh, the delay terms are greater now we can reduce this using direct form 2 structure what will we do is take the poles here take the zeros here and combine the delay part this is direct form 2 structure so let's draw that now we are talking about direct form 2. So direct form 2 says that we should have only one delay term which is common for poles and zeros. Like z raised to minus 1 is common for poles and zeros you can see. So we have to reduce the delay part. So first we will write the delay and this trick I have mentioned in my previous video as well. So basically this is x of n, this is y of n, z raised to minus 1. Now which one so here we will have poles and here we will have zeros okay so what is the multiplier let's check for pole it is minus 3 by 4 so we will take the negative value of that this means it would be 3 by 4 for zeros the coefficient or as multipliers will remain as it is so 1 by 3 will remain as it is 1 by 3 now let's talk about the further z is to minus 1 so this means that I am talking about right here z raised to minus 2 delay term. In 0 there is no z raised to minus 2 so this will be not present in direct form 2. Okay. Now this is present 1 by 8. Now this is the important term. There is an addition sign here because we have two terms z raised to minus 1 and z raised to minus 2 will both add here. Okay. And the coefficient is 1 by 8. So the negative of the coefficient is minus 1 by 8. Now this is the final answer you can see. So we have reduced the z raised to minus 1 term in direct form 2. And that's why you should note that direct form 2 is used in parallel and cascade realization. So let's talk about cascade and parallel. 
Now let's talk about cascade. So basically cascade means multiplying 2h of z. This is cascade. So when we talk about parallel realization, this means removing multiplication sign, we will add the h of z. So this means it is parallel, whereas this means it is cascade. So basic difference I have covered right now. So let's see how to draw cascade realization. So the first point is to plot direct form 2 of h1 of z, then direct form 2 of h2 of z, then we have to multiply both of them. So is the answer. So let's start. Direct form 2 of this. So what will happen? Plus sign. From here we will get the delay part. So this is x of n. This is y of n. The delay, let's, I will represent it by box. And inside there is z raised to minus 1 term. Okay. So this is simple. Now, what is the first term you can see? So both of them have z raised to minus 1. First term is 1, so 1 is present here. Now z raised to minus 1, which is this. And the coefficient is minus 1. Now this represents zeros, and for zeros, coefficient will remain as it is. So here it is minus 1. Whereas the coefficient will change right here. So for pole, it is 0 0.5. I hope this is simple. Now let's talk about this. This is interesting. Let's draw the structure again. 2 plus sign, 1 delay term. Now this box is again z raised to minus 1 delay. You have to write inside z raised to minus 1. Okay. Now you can see that there is no delay term. Alright. There is no delay term for 0 part. So this will not come. You can note. Because there was 2 term, I have to add the 2 term. This and this. That's why this plus sign was present. But here there are no 2 terms. There is only 1 term. So the first uh, coefficient right here is 1. Suppose it was 1.2, then here it would be 1.2. But right now here it is 1. So we have writing here 1. And this is y of n. Here this is x of n. Alright. Now the pole we have. First we have 1 which is already covered. Now in delay term there is a multiplier of 0 0.3. And here it would be minus 0 0.3. Alright, because in uh, poles we have coefficient that is negative of the coefficient. So this is the coefficient c. We have writing the negative coefficient c. Alright, now because it is cascaded, you have to join these two. Now you can see you have multiplied h1 into h2 of z. This is h1, this is h2. Our next topic is parallel realization. So our question is h of z is the previous question 1 minus z raised to minus 1 upon this denominator. So now what we have done is we have represented this in the form some constant by denominator 1 plus some constant let's say b by denominator 2. Now this denominator 1 is this term whereas this denominator 2 is this term. And we have found a and b using partial fraction logic. So this is the extra part you have to do in parallel realization. In cascade it was very simple. Just separate these two. Let's say this is one term. This is second term. And just multiply them. Find direct form two structure of both. And just you have to club them. But in this you have to solve the partial fraction and get the value of constant. After doing this there is a cakewalk. Because again this is h1 of z. This is h2 of z. And we have to add this. And after adding this, we are done with the answer. So again, we will find direct form 2 structure of h1 of z and direct form 2 structure of h2 of z. So let's see how to solve them. Now you can see I have drawn this 2. Why? Again, the logic is very simple. For direct form 2 structure, I usually do the 2 plus sign here. The purpose for having this plus sign was I have 2 terms in the numerator, at least a 2 term at least two term but now you can see that there is only one term that is the constant so there is no need to add a plus sign in the zero in the zero area but in the pole area we have to write the plus sign because there are two terms in the pole area you can see okay now why these two because we have two h1 of z and h2 of z we are writing h1 of z first then h2 of z okay 
So for, till now we are clear with the basic. Now let's just fill up the values. So for h1 of z, the term is this z minus 0 0.63 upon 1 minus 0 0.5 z is to minus 1. So you can see the 0 is here and it is minus 0 0.63 because coefficient will always remain the coefficient for 0. Whereas in pole it will have the negative value of that. So I am writing 0 0.5. I am done with h1 of z. Now let's talk about h2 of z. h2 of z again the 0 value is 1.63 but the pole value is plus 0 0.3. So what will be here? Minus 0 0.3. Right. Okay. Now I am done with h2 of z. So what's unique in parallel realization? The unique part is we have to add the output of both and this will give me y of n whereas I will give the common input to both and this is x of n. So this is the final answer. Now you can see I have added h1 of z plus h2 of z to get my answer. So in left hand side you have to uh, you have to get the x of n common for both whereas the output you have to add them and you get and you should have a common output that is y of n. So friends, if you like my video, then do like this video, share with your friends and subscribe to my YouTube channel. So we'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care. This is Shrenik Jain. Peace out.